I'm really excited to host this panel today dedicated to exposure guidelines for digital out of home. Digital out of home is poised to grow in a big way. In fact, Magna projects the sector will grow 20% this year. One of the challenges the industry has had is that there's never been a single accepted standard to measure exposure to digital out of home media until recently. Considering that there are an estimated 1.25 million screens in the US, the need for standardization guidelines is paramount. We spent time this year with industry leaders to create and publish a framework for standard methodology for capturing mobile advertising device IDs to represent consumers exposed to digital out of home. These guidelines are a big step for the industry, and I'm thrilled to welcome our panelists this afternoon to discuss what these guidelines are and how they will empower omnichannel marketers to drive digital out of home growth. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Eugenie Chen, VP, Data of Analytics of Vistar Media, and Ian Dalmore, VP of Digital Growth at Lamar. Both were key architects in shaping this new set of standards for exposure measurement. So welcome. Thank you, Christina. Hi, everyone. This is Eugenie. Um, it's such a pleasure being here um, and I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Thanks, Christina. Uh, Ian Dalimore again, um, beyond excited of where our industry is growing and the importance of this panel specifically in these standards. Great, thank you. So Eugenie, I'm gonna kick it off with you. Can you tell us a little bit more about these guidelines and what went into their development? Yeah, of course. So um, these guidelines and practices um, are going to help define what an exposure means for the job home um, as to who was exposed to a digital home campaign. And we believe that these guidelines and best practices will help us lower the barrier of entry for the job home as a channel to further enable ad effective this measurement to help only channel marketers better understand the value of the job home. And then, you know, our goal is to help develop this basic methodology um, that will kind of help enable future development and collaboration across the entire industry with more input from industry leaders. Great, great. So Ian, let's clarify what these guidelines are not, because it's important to understand what the guardrails around them went into it to standardize, but also um, it seems like we've left room for innovation. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the one kind of glaring one that when we first started this um, project was it's not intended to alter any existing base currency measurement systems. So this is not an effort to replace Geopath. Um, what it what it, we're really talking about here is there's so many different metrics and variables that exist uh, that become a part of this framework. So this isn't something that's going to be set in stone today. Uh, what we found throughout that is that there's constantly changing, you know, even as while we were working through this documentation, the emergence of iOS 14 and the impacts that that may have. Um, so what we're most importantly trying to do is make sure that we're not trying to recreate something that we've done in the past and is, that is done specifically on the digital side of things. So in essence, we're not trying to recreate the sends of our past. Um, also, and most importantly, and I think that this has sometimes become a fault, is we're not just trying to capture new digital revenue. <clears throat> it's imperative that we make sure we do this correctly. Um, and it's also not about just making the buying process easy at the expense of the media. Um, what we've learned through all the different efforts and the changes in the out-of-home space, and as we've kind of uh, dove deep into the programmatic world, is our medium is very unique and we have to treat it as such. Great, thank you. Um, so why is it important now? Like, you know, how does this framework contribute to growth for digital to home from a single channel perspective, but then also an omni-channel perspective? Yeah, and that's that's a great uh, question because as we began this process, we were actually telling ourselves like, why haven't we done this a long time ago? Um, so I think there's two big core factors that's kind of driving the need immediately today. Um, the most important thing is we have to bridge the gap among the different digital venue types, the environments, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we're um, having the online, digital, and offline out of home be a part of this. So two important factors, obviously the rise of programmatic. So there's a massive opportunity to bring out of home closer into the omni-channel marketing strategy, but it requires the ability to measure the actual impact of out of home on key metrics. So the need and an appropriate methodology to accomplish that. Uh, secondly, um, it comes back to revenue. The omni-channel DSPs, we have to listen to that community. 
yes, we have our unique world that out of home lives in, and there's all these different nuances, but unless we listen to them and take what their needs are and wants are, and then build it into our uniqueness in the out of home space, it automatically will give us the ability, like we say internally at Lamar, to be able to compare apples to apples with metrics. And most importantly, they're able and they feel comfortable with the different measurements and our methodologies because it's what they're used to in the online and, and mobile and social space can easily translate over into the out-of-home space. Yeah, great point. Eugenie, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I think, yeah, on top of what Ian just said, I think we're seeing more and more companies um, across all sides of the industry um, kind of joining, you know, the out-of-home space. And we think that's a very exciting um, development, but at the same time, because they are new to out of home, they might, may not be knowledgeable about the nuances um, of the out of home. And then, as you mentioned, it's kind of very important to make sure that when we are developing solutions for this channel, we do take the nuances of the out of home into consideration so that we're representing this medium and evaluating this medium appropriately to set up for success um, in an omnichannel environment. So that I think, you know, we really want to use these best practices, these guidelines to help, um, you know, inform what those nuances are and then to make that solution development process easier for them. But at the same time, you know, make the methodology transparent for all players in this industry. Um, and then we think that, you know, will help drive growth and revenue for the job home as a whole. Yeah. Great. So it's interesting because, uh, Ian, you kind of mentioned before, like, why haven't we done this before if it's so important? So, you know, can you speak to that at all? Yeah, and, and I I think the most important thing in, in our universe, we don't realize how unique it is that, you know, an Ian Dallimore at Lamar, an Andy Strebus at Outfront, a um, Jeremy Flynn at Clear Channel, and all these other folks that exist on the publisher vendor side, how unique it is that we're all kind of hanging out in the same space and we're happy to jump on calls. The two guys that I mentioned, they're great friends of mine, just like Eugenie and you guys are. That doesn't happen in the digital out of home, the digital um, online and social space. You don't see Facebook, Amazon getting together and saying, hey, how do, let's, let's define some key metrics. They're very much siloed. Um, so I think what happened over time is we were all in those silos on at least the publisher side and then you had great folks like Eugenia at Vistar and the guys at Place Exchange and so on, where it was happening in silos. They were being approached by these different measurement methodologies. And I think it kind of came to a head. And I, I applaud the team at Vistar for kind of saying, all right, let's get in a room. Let's talk about this. And again, the uniqueness of the out-of-home space allowed us to do that. Uh, the other big thing, and it's the obvious one, is the nuances of the different out-of-home networks. So a large format company like Lamar is drastically different than, you know, the, the folks at GSTV compared to the folks that are at, um, you know, in mall networks and so on and so forth. So I think the, the different screen types, most people kind of stayed away um, and most of the measurement folks that came in kind of treated it all as the same. And, and we learned quickly through this process that that wasn't the case. Um, and I think in order for us to account for the differences in the exposure in the environment and the data ability by inventory type, um, while most importantly, we're ensuring that consistency of the exposure capture within that inventory type, we had to break out those methodologies recommended for capturing exposure for outdoor compared to exposure to indoor. And again, it goes back to that omni-channel. How do we make it similar to what they're used to buying and feel confident in the out-of-home space and how those um, device IDs are being measured while still dealing with the uniqueness of our space. So I, I'm actually blown away about how the collaboration of so many different partners in this industry came together to put this documentation together, so. Great, Eugenie, do you have anything to add about the collaboration that went into this project? Yeah, yeah. I think that's also like another very unique um, but really valuable, I think, aspect of our industry. 
um, I think, as, as you mentioned, is not very common uh, where you see, you know, the competitors, the stakeholders from all sides of in the industry coming together and then trying to collaborate on an initiative with the aim of driving growth for this channel as a whole. So I think, you know, you know as being part of this initiative, it's just been, you know, such like, a, I will say it's just such a, you know, an exciting experience seeing how this collaboration came along. Um, and in fact, that we're able to produce um, these guidelines and you know, best practices that do reflect the different perspectives from these different stakeholders. Um, I think that's you know, what we are really excited to see because we believe that you know, developing that shared understanding of what methodology uh, should look like, what that framework should be, um, will make this initiative truly valuable for future development, improvement, and an industry-wide adoption. Great, great. You know, when we spoke earlier this week, um, Ian, you mentioned how important optimization was. And of course, you know, coming from an agency uh, for over 15 years, there was a lot of talk about other channels being able to optimize mid-campaign. And it was something that out of home was considered sort of short on. So can you speak to how these guidelines will enhance that? Yeah, and, and look, you and I've worked together for a long time in your, your former life on the agency side. And we would have these great successful campaigns and we would layer in some sort of measurement along with some of our, our other publisher partners. And you guys would be at the agency side would say, that's great. Next quarter when we plan or next year when this comes around, we're going to push for an increase because now we have validation with this measurement. And that was great at the time. But I think with the rise of not only programmatic, but also automation has allowed for that. Um, and, and we've seen countless number of campaigns to where in the past we were kind of siloed outside of social performance, outside of mobile, outside of online. And then they had to kind of mash them all together. Now, during a campaign, they can literally see on these omni-channel DSPs, okay, Snapchat's not performing where it should at this moment in time. We see digital out of home. We see Volta, large format roadside, and grocery TV are performing higher. Let me shift some of that uh, social media budget over to out of home, and let's see how the optimization works. So it's almost like, a, and again, this isn't like a mad scientist moving things around, but it's what we see is this shift in funds, and sometimes they favor certain media formats in the out-of-home space. Sometimes you see shifting around of where, hey, a play-based network in, indoor works better. But I think this is going to, you know, we always talk about how do we capture that 135 billion plus in the digital universe. It's the optimization that's going to allow for this. And I think this, um, this measurement and this documentation that we've put together as an industry allows and paves the way for us to start to pick off revenue, not after a campaign, but during the campaign, throughout, whether it's daily, whether it's hourly, whether it's mid-flight, and seeing those funds shift. And now we can really start to, to get excited about um, growing our digital revenue in our space and the importance of out-of-home. Great, great. Um, Eugenie, can you add to that in terms of like what these guidelines will help enhance in terms of attribution alongside other channels? Yeah, totally. Um, I think the most important part of that is to, again, having that shared framework um, for us to have that conversation with omnichannel marketers. Since um, exposure enables, um, you know, different types of attribution studies. And then, you know, the attribution studies are also not just like uh, one type of metric. It's like all different size of um, types of metrics that kind of, you know, need to be aligned with a marketer's um, marketing strategies and objectives. So we feel like having this standard in place will really just open up the door to reduce any upfront confusion around what an exposure is so that we can spend more time and actually focus on the strategic conversations with marketers about what their goals are for a given campaign, how all the poem can actually contribute that to that success and what attribution, you know, kind of solutions we can use to actually help evaluate. But at the same time, like Ian mentioned, um, helping form optimization and campaign, you know, future campaign strategies. Great, great. So, you know, Ian, is this something that would be relevant for just the large network operators? Or do you think that this would be relevant, um, you know, digital um, programmatic trading for small and independent operators that don't have a lot of scale? Yeah, I think the, the independent operators 
are going to benefit more from this, um, not more than than everyone, but I think it it begins to bring them into the conversation. And I think that's imperative. When we talk, you know, I talked to Sir Martin over the summer and within his Media Monk agency, the response that I constantly got was, yeah, the out-of-home space is just not scalable. It's not large enough. But now with independent billboard operators where there's massive gaps uh, in the marketplace, great quick story in Denver, um, you know, we brought on board Rocky Mount uh, Outdoor because the, the scale of digital out of home in Denver is extremely limited. And now he's beginning to see revenue rise through programmatic through this ability where in the past, you know, maybe he couldn't or, or similar um, independent companies maybe didn't have an expert that focused on this or they didn't have the ability to kind of hone in the technology. And I think, you know, with folks like Vistar and having them come onto the platform and using these methodologies begins to bring them into the into the bigger mix. And, and most importantly, when, when we're using, when the, the digital buyers are using data, the screen type doesn't matter in the out of home space. It's relevant to who's in front of what type of screen. And they're not looking at that jelly bean at the bottom of the, of the billboard or, or who's, you know, what's the Volta compared to this. They're just purely based on audience type. And I think this brings to light a lot of the independent, uh, whether they're independent billboards or play space or taxi or whomever. So it really opens the ecosystem even more. Wow. Eugenie, um, can you speak to this star in terms of do you have small operators and large operators on your exchange? Yeah, yes, uh, we, we definitely do. Um, and I will say that, you know, we work very closely with all of our partners um, just to make sure, you know, one is um, their a network is set up for success to make sure that, you know, the setup is consistent and can be transacted, you know, in that programmatic environment, um, you know, for uh, buyers, um, especially across the omni-channel um, side of things. And then I will say that we also, you know, make sure that we make um, the methodologies like these and um, available solutions kind of like um, as, you know, uh, we, we create materials to make sure that they also um, can, you know, use those materials to understand how to incorporate their networks um, into, you know, the right strategies. Like Ian said, the environments may matter. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the affinity of your screens to a given targeting strategy uh, may matter. So it re it's really about using that information and then, you know, taking that into sort of um, how they can frame up their own networks, um, their own screens um, to align with that, um, you know, higher level strategy. So are the specs done? Is this a, is this a starting point, a midpoint, an end point? Um, what are your thoughts on that in terms of continued collaboration and maybe even advancing the specs further? Yeah, totally. So um, I definitely think this is just a starting point. Um, I think like we all kind of came together, you know, to talk about based on the current, you know, kind of solutions, data, and the networks, um, you know, we have um, kind of like available what a, you know, standard should look like. Um, but we feel like this standard should be really like a living and breathing document because as mentioned, we are seeing more and more players coming into this industry, which is very exciting. But then we definitely want to make sure as new players come in, as new formats, new solution providers, new metrics, uh, new buyers come in, um, we are also taking their feedback and input to, you know, inform how we can better improve and enhance this document. And then also with, you know, additional data sources becoming available. So uh, we really think that this is just a starting point, um, a framework that we hope can, you know, we can use it for enabling further collaboration and adoption across the entire industry. Great. Ian, how about you? Yeah, I I think that there's other there's other areas, but this is 100% just the beginning. And I really geek out about this kind of stuff. I think as an industry, we're just at our infancy. Um, you know, a lot of vendors are just dipping their toe into the programmatic space. We've been a uh, in this space for eight and a half years, and every day we come to work, my team, we're constantly learning. And I think that there's constantly new areas and new things that we can tackle. And I think this is just the beginning of the framework. Um, if, if we think this documentation ends here, then um, I, we should probably get into a, a, a new industry because there's so much more to do. And I think it's, it's extremely beneficial for our, our industry itself. 
Great. Well, the OCCI does intend to um, start a working group for moving vehicles to see how we can apply these standards to that to that uh, format as well. So. Um, again, so thank you both so much. This is such a great conversation. Thank you for your leadership, for all your work on this. Um, for those who would like to see the standards, please visit the OAAA website at OAAA.org. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.